Good evening, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, excited to be back talking with you guys tonight. I am, I just gotta be honest, I've been feeling very tired. So if my words come off as maybe a little bit crazy, I do apologize. Um, <laughs> hopefully it makes, it all makes sense. But tonight I want to talk about action and how as coaches, it's very easy to go from uh, having dreams to just allowing them to be wishes and not actually, um, not actually doing anything, right? And so tonight is all about finding how to take that action. I'm gonna make sure that everybody is muted. Okay, we're good. We're all good. All right, I am going to share the screen. Hopefully this, I know Mary, it is the daylight savings. I have such an internal body clock, so it rocks my world whenever that happens. Um, okay, so from talk to action is what we're talking through tonight. This quote, um, I just wanna start and open up with this because this is huge, guys. Um, and I want it to soak in and sink in. If you wanna write this down, this is a great one to look at. A vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes the time Vision with action can change the world. And that comes from Lewis House. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on the book he has, but I haven't personally read it yet, but it would be one that I now would love to add to my list of books I need to read. So I'm going to, um, I'll bring that to the team page though later. But guys, think about that. We all know, like we've all heard, you know, a, a dream is merely a wish, like if you don't do it, right? So like a vision without action, like when we sit here and we say like, this is, man, this is what I would really love to do. This is what I would love to do with my life. Um, without doing anything about it, it's simply just a dream, right? It's not actually achieving any goals. And then on the opposite end, if we take action daily, if every day we sit down and we grind, and I'm sure some of you can relate maybe in jobs that you've had in the past or maybe a job you're currently in right now or even with this business, that you feel like you're taking action, but without a vision in place, without something that's deeply laid on your heart, without giving a crap, you're just passing the time, really, right? It just feels almost clerical. So vision, guys, the combination of taking your vision and putting action together with it, that's where the magic happens. So let's talk about your dreams really quick before we dive into action and all that stuff. Because it really does make a difference. Your dreams are so crucial in this process. I want you to think for a second and maybe jot this down. What was deeply on your heart when you decided to become a coach? So when you you know, I don't know if you were following me or if you were following an, another coach, your upline coach or what have you. I don't know if you watched a what is coaching call. Uh, I don't know if you just got so annoyed by somebody's constant posts about their workouts and shakes that you just finally like, okay, fine. What is this? Um, I don't know what exactly that was for you. It's different for everybody, but something was sparked in you when you decided that's something I want to do, right? Cause you actually had to like, think about that. You had to weigh your options and you had to kind of make an investment in yourself to become a coach. So what was deeply on your heart when you decided to become a coach? And that kind of correlates with your why. So why do you do this? What's important? And here's the deal, guys. It isn't enough to say like, oh, man, I'd love to be able to afford a vacation to Disney World. Now that's awesome. And yeah, I want you guys to be able to text me or text your upline or um, share on the team page when you can afford a family vacation to Disney. Like, absolutely. I want you to do that. But that's not going to get you up in the morning when you don't want to get up. That's not going to fuel your fire um, when the going gets tough. Disney isn't enough. To say instead, guys, I am $30,000 in credit card debt I don't know, or I have a mortgage coming out of my ears, or uh, I have student loans that I will never be able to pay off. That is what is fueling me to say that. Now that's different financially. So that's the financial aspect of this business. If you're just looking for a little extra pocket cash, yeah, you can get a little extra pocket cash. Absolutely. But when the going gets tough and when you feel rejected and when uh, things are difficult in your business, that's not going to be enough. A little, a couple extra bucks isn't going to do it for you. You've got to have a bigger why. Losing weight isn't enough. I harp, and I this month for our new challenge group that uh, we just started, I harped on some of those people that put, I want to lose weight. I said, not good enough. 
I, me I messaged them straight up and I said, I, I appreciate you setting goals. You know, of course I wasn't that rude. Uh, <laughs> only in my head, uh, appreciate you setting goals, but listen, how much weight do you want to lose? Like, I want to be able to celebrate that number with you. Um, so when you say, yeah, I'd like to lose weight. That's why I joined Beachbody. That's why I became a Beachbody coach. I want to lose weight. Yeah. Losing weight's not going to fuel you on that day. You don't freaking want to get up and do your workout. Right. Because it's not enough to say, um, I want to get off of certain medications that I'm on or I want to give myself a longer life, or I want to reverse some of the diseases that I have, um, that is bigger, right? So losing weight, that's not enough. But when you start to look at your health in like a bigger picture, that's going to be a deeper why. That'll fuel your fire. That'll fuel your dreams. Um, and to say, I love this one. A lot of people, when they start as a coach, will say, I really want to help people, Brittany. I just want to help people. And um, show of hands slash, like, you can comment. Did anybody watch that Caleb, Coach Caleb video that I posted on the team page, that three-minute one? Um, if you haven't, it's funny. You need to go watch it. And he does get a little, like, a little bit uh, tough love which is funny for him because I never see him acting like that. Um, but he got a little tough love in that video. And it's good because, you know, in the beginning, a lot of coaches are like, yeah, Brittany, I just want to help people. I want to help everybody. I just want to help so many people. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. How would that feel? Oh, that feels so good if I could just help people. I just want to help people. But then when they have one person that they're helping, all of a sudden they sell a challenge pack, right? And they get two success club points and they're mad because they didn't hit five. Isn't that helping somebody? aren't you helping one person? Like, isn't that awesome? Or when they, you know, um, they want to help people, but they only have one person in their challenge group and they feel bummed out about it because you're helping somebody. One is helping, right? And so putting it in that perspective, like, help, so I think helping people is too blanket and broad of a statement at times. And so helping people, like help people do what? Help people have transformation in their lives, right? Like you want to have that text where somebody you know, sends you that message that, uh, they finally can fit into pants that they haven't worn since they were in college, or they finally feel good in their skin, or they finally have one thing that they can say about their body that they actually like. Like those are things that keep you going. Whenever I think about quitting or I think about, um, what is it? Like, what does my work matter? I look at those moments. I wouldn't have, or those people wouldn't have those successes if I hadn't have been there for them. And the people that you're helping won't have those if you don't um, continue to work towards helping them. So thinking about your dreams, guys, because that fuels your action. So there's three parts to this that um, I want to kind of talk through before I give you some tangible action steps to take. But let's think this through. Okay, the head, the heart, and the hands, right? Like top, middle, bottom. We're going to talk through these three things real quick because all of these play a role in why a lot of people don't actually take action and simply just dream. So your head is like the knowledge, right? And it's your ability to learn new things. So when you join this business, there's so much to learn. There's um, resource pages and girl boss boot camp and new coach emails and a cover photo that's got videos to watch and a resource page and then these training groups and it's just a lot and then you've got your coach online office to navigate and like there's just so much right but that's the knowledge part right like you're getting fueled bit by bit by bit with the knowledge of how to be a coach and how to do this you have the ability to learn new things at your fingertips all the time because uh, our page at our our team does a great job of implementing resources, but we also have access to resources on our team page. Um, you also have access to resources, abundant resources beyond just the walls of our team page. So there is a lot of knowledge that you can have. So it's a good thing, right? Because we can't really take action if we don't know what we're doing. And so a lot of times a coach gets stuck because. Um, you know, they can't, they don't know what to do. I want to run a challenge group, Brittany, but I don't know how to do it yet. So my first step is I train coaches on how to do that. And so as you grow coaches into your downline, that's going to be important too. As you're mentoring coaches, you want to make sure that your downline coaches know how to do the things that you know how to do. A lot of times it's difficult because since some of these things are just so remote, um, like 
rote behavior for me at times, I forget that that's something I've got to train people on. And so that's something I'm working to get better on. But as leader coaches, you want to also make sure you're working to get better at that too. As newer coaches, you've got access to resources all over the place. And so if you want to learn something in this business, it's there for you. It is totally there for you. The first step to any sort of transformation, to making change in your business, to uh, taking action and, and not just talking, is to get in your head and get the knowledge. Because you can't fix anything in your business that you don't already know, okay? The next part is gonna be your heart, okay? So again, we've got our knowledge, like great. That doesn't necessarily mean we've taken action yet, right? We've got knowledge. Now we've got our heart. That's how you're feeling. It's your conviction. It's that why. It's the dreams. Um, maybe say, I need to change. I need to take action. I need to do this. That deep burning feeling that you wake up with, that like elephant on your shoulders at times where you're just like, oh, like I know what I need to do and I know why because I, I just want this so bad. It's your desire, guys, to take action towards reaching goals, okay? And so the last part is going to be your hands. Now, what's funny is your hands are the action takers. Without this, nothing changes. Action requires you to have faith and belief in yourself and in things that have not happened yet, especially in this business. And this business is so different than most models because you don't know what is going to come next. And in most situations when I go to work I know I clock in and I do this and I have these tasks I'm supposed to do because that was what was assigned to me and then I clock out and then I go home right and you have your actions um, and you don't have to believe in something that's not there because it's already laid out for you by whoever your boss is or whatever the company is in this sense the sky is a limit so you have to have a sense of faith and belief in not only yourself but in where you're going and what you can't maybe see just yet there's a barrier that happens, guys. There's a big barrier that happens. And actually, I want to go back to the screen really quick. So your head, your heart, and your hands are those three things that put together, right? When we have knowledge, we have a deep conviction, we have like an emotional desire and attachment to what we're doing. We've got a deep burning why. We've got lots of dreams um, that we want to bring to fruition. We also, in conjunction, need to take action. But here's what happens. Between heart and hands, there oftentimes is a barrier that we have the knowledge, we have the conviction, we have that need, that desire, but we stop, we hit a wall, and we don't actually take action. Why? Right? And I'm sure you can think of a million scenarios in your life where this has happened to you before, where you know what you're supposed to do, you know you want to do it, but you just don't seem to do it. And so the barrier, in my personal opinion, these are all the ones I kind of was brainstorming. I think the barrier is a lot of fear. A lot of times it's fear-based. And if we go into a situation already expecting the worst, oftentimes we go in giving it not our whole, not our best, right? And so when I go to invite somebody already assuming that they're not going to want to do my group, well, that's not good. I want to go into things without fear, without thinking I'm going to be rejected, okay? I think another barrier is selfishness. And I, I say this lightly and I say this with all the love in my heart. And I say this because I have this tendency as well, is that sometimes it's like you have all this knowledge <clears throat> and you have all this like burning desire and you just keep it for yourself. Right. And sometimes you forget you've got to share that with other people. And in this business, that's the gift we have is that we have the knowledge as we get better, right. As we get um, more athletic, as we do more programs, as we drink Shakeology longer, as we dive into more um, about clean eating and just learning about all that and figuring out a, a lifestyle that works for you because what works for me might not work for you to a T. And so working, figuring out what works exactly for you and then allowing your followers to understand that, that's important because if you know what's working for you and you love it so much and you're so emotionally attached to it, but you don't share it and take action, that's just being selfish, right? share the wealth. <laughs> um, anxiety. Sometimes we're just nervous, right? And I was kind of talking about that. That kind of goes with the fear base, but sometimes we just get so nervous about X, Y, and Z. I mean, really we create our own anxiety oftentimes with all the things that we think might happen or they, we think they might say or X, Y, and Z, right? And so the anxiety sometimes can be that barrier of why you don't actually go from knowing and feeling to doing. I also just realized that when I'm doing this with head and heart that it looks like I'm milking a cow. 
Okay. I'm not sure anybody can see me, but I just like looked at myself. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to stop that hand motion. I need, I, that's not the good hand motion. Okay. Moving on. I digress. Okay. Another one is your mindset and limited beliefs. Maybe things that we were taught growing up that just that limit our belief system, right? Um, I know one for me growing up was that um, money's always a problem. And so I have this limited belief in my head that money's just a problem. It's always a problem. And it's not necessarily always a problem. It's just that's what I was taught. Um, there's other limiting beliefs that I was taught just because of where I was, uh, how I was raised and just my own upbringing, but I'm sure you have your own set of them. And so understanding what beliefs are actually limiting you and uh, working on your mindset. Comment with others if you guys have them. Um, I'm not going to, oh, I see, oh, sorry, my little thing's up in the way. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull up the chat. Time management. I love it, Mary. Yeah, time management can be a barrier at times. And understanding how to schedule and organize your time so that you get the most important things done um, within those hours that you have, right? And then everything else just kind of has to wait. Absolutely. Learning how to say no is a big one, too, with that. Um, and then guys, the thing is though, all of these barriers, as I was writing them all and thinking through all of them, all of these barriers can be worked on um, through personal development. That's the cool thing. So knowing like how to run a business, knowing how to run challenge groups, knowing how to be the best coach you can be and loving it and wanting to do it, and then actually taking that action you can break through that wall simply by fueling your mind with personal development. Becca said, not believing in yourself is definitely me. Yeah. And that one, that one, guys, there's so many people that don't believe in themselves. It's self-confidence, self-worth, self-esteem, all that stuff, guys. Again, it's not an arrogance thing that like all of a sudden, if I believe in myself, I'm an arrogant human being. It's more so that you deserve to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, there's not a single other person on this planet that it's their job to do that for you, right? And it's coming to that understanding and knowing that. But again, personal development and finding books that are about like learning how to believe in yourself, right? Or whatever, time management, whatever your ailment is. Okay, let me scroll down. Okay, so guys, that being said, we only grow by failing. We only grow by failing. And I know you're like, what? Like, that sucks. Why are you going to tell me that? But that's the truth. Like, Imagine the most successful person in the world. They have failed more times than you can imagine. The difference is they just never stopped, right, after they hit a, hit a wall. So um, I love this one. Walt Disney, he was told um, when he was younger that he wasn't creative. He, he, got, he didn't get a job or he got fired from a job, one or the other. <coughs> um, and if you know, you can correct me. But um, – Basically, he lost his job because they thought what his material, I believe it was at a newspaper, um, and they believed his, his material wasn't good and that he wasn't creative and he didn't have what it takes. Guys, Walt Disney. And imagine if Walt Disney had said, you know what? That's a failure. I failed today. I'm done. Then we wouldn't have Disney. And you're like, our lives would suck. And I can't believe I keep coming back to Disney tonight. That's so weird. But um, it's <clears throat> Disney is such a huge, like, staple in the world and imagine life without that right and you might be thinking Brittany I'm not Walt Disney but Walt Disney didn't think he was Walt Disney before he was Walt Disney does that make sense like you don't know who you aren't if that makes any sense you you've just got to keep going do not fear taking action and moving forward because we only grow by that so I've got six action steps that I believe are really important in this business and that um, some of them might be redundant for you and some of them you might be like, aha, I need that. I needed to hear that. Um, where, whatever the case may be, have an open mind about it, even if it sounds redundant, because I know some of you are like, Brittany, if you say that again, I might poke my eyes out, but that, um, bear with me because there is a reason that these six steps made it to the list tonight. So, ooh. Ah, I want to cheat and show you too. Okay, number one, guys, you knew it was going to be here. Do your vital behaviors. <laughs> and I know you're like, Brittany, why? Like, why would you say that? Because they're vital. 
If you're not doing those four behaviors every single day, it's all talk. It's not action. That's your action. And commit to yourself and your dreams. It's you and your dreams. You have to understand that doing those behaviors are allowing you to have a better life and a better and, and better vision moving forward, but also consistently. Commit to yourself and your dreams consistently. The way that I think one of the reasons why um, I have longevity in this business is because Every time I've wanted to throw in the towel on anything, um, I just thought about how I would be giving up on myself, right? And furthermore, on my team, but always about committing to myself, that if I gave up, I'd be giving up on myself and my dreams. And then what? And then what would I have? And Beachbody might not be like, selling challenge packs and running challenge groups might not be the, the um, meat and potatoes or like the the center of your dreams, but it, it can be the vessel to get there, right? It can be the, the bridge to get you to another place. There are so many people in this business that have allowed, they're allowed to do things in their life and now build other businesses on the side or do, uh, be home with their children, uh, bring their husbands home from the military, things like that. That was their dream, but Beachbody was the avenue to get there. And so keep that in mind whenever you're like, but Beachbody is not actually my dream, Brittany, but it's the avenue, right? And so doing your vital behaviors, guys, there's four of them. Can you name those four in the comments? First person to name four gets a sticker. <laughs> Pop quiz. The vital behaviors, guys, the one that I thought I didn't have to do for a long time was invite. And I hid behind my posts and I was worried that of, of what people would think. And I also watched my business stay pretty stagnant because I wasn't actually reaching out and I was being selfish by not inviting people. I was making assumptions. There were so many people. Yay. You guys are so smart. You are so smart. Um, <laughs> Yes. Um, I wasn't inviting people because I just made assumptions about, about what they wanted or what they thought, right? Or they didn't need this or they didn't, they didn't want to be in my group. And I made these assumptions and I watched those same people join Beachbody with another coach because I never asked. Guys, it'll happen to you. You'll, and you'll be like, ah, oh, man, I didn't have any clue that you wanted this. And, um, and th maybe they did, you know? And so it's important that you don't get caught up in the what ifs and the I think they might say this or whatever. Inviting, I know, is probably the toughest one. Finding time for personal development, I think, is tough for certain people. I tend to be a bookworm myself, so I've always enjoyed that aspect of the business. But if you're somebody that you struggle with personal development, guys, I was posting the other day on the team page, listen to your PD in the shower. That's actually what I did tonight. I was taking a shower and prepping for this, and I was listening to another YouTube video about taking action so that I could prepare mentally for tonight. And so while I'm in the shower, rather than, you know, and sometimes in the shower, you have like great creative thoughts. I always have my best thoughts in the shower, honestly, but, um, listening to personal development while you shower or while you're brushing your teeth. Um, another great time would be while you're driving or if you're walking somewhere and you can just put your headphones in, right? I used to grocery shop with personal development in because A, I didn't want to like listen to the hustle and bustle of everybody else, but B, it gave me time. Like I had my list in front of me. I was grocery shopping. I didn't need to like, you know, so I listened to personal development. It worked. Um, and recognition guys, you know, recognition can be anywhere. You can recognize by the way, you don't have to be me to recognize somebody on the team page. I just want to show that, shout that out. Like, you don't have to be Brittany to go on Inspire Beauty and say that you think someone's crushing it. If you think someone's crushing it, you should probably tell them because we don't get praise enough in our life, right? So making sure that you're recognizing people. Um, and I think you guys are really rocking at proof of the product. We tend to do that, do a really great job on our team with that. Number two, you've got to treat your business like a business. So couple questions to ask yourself. Do you set work hours? Do you stay consistent with running your business? Or is it like, oh, I'm really consistent on like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday hit and I get so busy and then the weekend hits and then, oh, and then Sunday night, I'm like, crap, I got to get back to my business. And then Monday comes back and you're back to being a business. Um, consistency, right? And 
consistency doesn't mean that you have to put in a lot of time. It just means that you need to be there and show up. Your business is your storefront. Your social media is your storefront, right? And so not showing up to your social media is like closing your doors for the day, okay? People have got to see what you're all about. Imagine if somebody, if you're trying to friend request somebody and they don't really know much about you, they just know you have a couple mutual friends and then they look at a couple scrolls and they see that like, who is this person? And you're not adding value and you're not there very often. Is that really somebody that they're going to want to follow, you know? So treating it like that business and letting your business reflect how you, um, I'm sorry, your business reflects how you approach it. So approaching it the way you want it to to turn out for you. Also a monthly plan. Nicole did a great job of also uh, creating a monthly plan on our team page and sharing that with us. And that was really awesome. It's not hard at all. And honestly, you don't have to go and do like a crazy pick monkey thing. You can simply just write it in a calendar in your planner or wherever you have a calendar space and just pencil in stuff, but making sure you have a monthly plan because guys, I know you're busy. I know you're busy. And so in order to not feel like you're in this rat race or you're trying to just tread water and stay afloat. Um, having that monthly plan is so helpful. You know why it's helpful this morning when I woke up, I didn't have to think, what am I going to do this week in my business? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Next week is when my free group starts. So this week is all about my free group. What should I post about this week? I don't know. Oh, I do know everything I post about this week for the most part is going to have something to do underlying message with the free group. Right. And then when next week hits, okay, we're getting ready to do our inspire beauty coach um, live sneak peek the following Monday. So I'm going to probably be putting in some disclaimers and some things about what I do as a coach. Right. And so it guides me. It's not even like you have to have a monthly plan because that makes you a coach. No, I have a monthly plan because it keeps my butt on track. Right. And it helps me to treat it like a business rather than just trying to like catch at things that are flying around. Me. Um, Number three, schedule time to utilize all of your tools and grow. So I know the head, we talked about the head in the beginning as your knowledge base, right? And that that's where you're getting all your information and that that's not actually action. But because there's so much to learn in this business and because this business evolves and grows and shifts and social media is always changing and there's so many other avenues like to advance yourself if one day you want to write a blog or one day you want to start a YouTube channel or one day you want to whatever, like the sky's the limit for you. I, there's probably things that'll happen in the next two to three years that we don't even, don't even exist yet, right? With the way that technology moves. And so scheduling time to utilize those tools to actually get in and learn um, and grow is taking action, right? And so not just saying, I know that I need to have more knowledge or I know I need to uh, spend some time like growing in this business, but actually scheduling that time. If you're in a team training, um, if you're in a team training, then scheduling time to like really be in that team training. I love these team trainings and I love them on the challenge tracker app. It, it's just so, it's so great. But something I find that happens month to month is instead of actually focusing on the training, we get really caught up in plugging our shakes and our workouts in. And I know that I'm subject to doing that too. And so I'm taking a step back in my own business right now. And I'm thinking, okay, Brittany, I got to schedule time to really be present in each of these trainings during March. Because if I don't actually schedule that time to really be present and really dig into that information and learn from it, I'm not going to grow. I'm not actually going to grow. Okay. So taking action in that way. Number four, you've got to run challenge groups. This is the bread and butter of your business, okay? It's, it's how you brand yourself, and you're branding yourself. So showing up to your audience, letting them know that you have this to offer. Guys, if somebody, if you say, like today, if today I said I was hosting a free group and nobody joined my free group, then maybe in two weeks on Monday, I'd, I'd say I'm hosting another free group, and I would just do it all over again. You've already got the information, right? And so if at first you don't succeed, you try, try again. I've had plenty of challenge groups that um, I didn't have new people join for. So I, I just had either old customers or I had people enter for free because I just wanted to, I wanted to get better. I wanted to learn how to run challenge groups and you can't learn how to run them if you don't actually do them, right? And so if you've tried a challenge group before and you feel like it didn't work for you, quote unquote, um, revamp the way you're looking at it. 
do you hit a wall and then just stop? Is, is your barrier not allowing you to take action? You know you need to run them and you want to run them, but then when you try, uh, it's like that fear creeps in and you hit that wall and so you just stop taking action. You've got to run challenge groups. Again, and I hate to use that word selfish because it's like it, it stings a little, but I feel like it's selfish not to run challenge groups. Like you're saying, I've got this thing and I don't want anybody else to know about it. No, like that's why we coach because we want to help other people. Um, oh, also about challenge groups really quick. Guys, remember, they can buy from the infomercials. They can buy from Amazon. They can buy from Beachbody.com. They don't need to buy from you. The only reason they would buy from you is because of the challenge groups that you're running. So that's your business. Um, another one, get a success partner. I haven't talked about this very much on our team page. Um, and this is something that as our team is growing now, and we've got a lot of people leading and a lot of people wanting to um, become leaders too. I think this is really important. And finding a way to um, get a hold of somebody that can help support you, bounce ideas with you, um, maybe co-run groups if you feel like you're, if you're struggling just trying to manage it all slash um, put enough people into these groups, maybe co-running groups together to take a little bit of the pressure off. Um, somebody who can help you climb your ladder and hit goals, right? And so a success partner, I should talk about this much more on our team page, honestly, but I wanted to throw that one in here because finding somebody who can, who you can run alongside of is super huge in this business. And, uh, it does, it does amazing things. Um, and the last one guys is have a no excuses mentality. We all have our own share of challenges and struggles and life happens, guys. It does. And it won't stop happening. I hate to break it to you. So if you think like, oh, life happened to me today and today really sucked. Hope tomorrow life doesn't happen. Guess what? Tomorrow life's going to happen again. Like it, that's it. Every day it's going to be something. So you have to choose to not let it affect you and not let it affect your dreams, your vision, and essentially your action, right? Um, I feel sometimes like I, I want to ask the question, are you letting that get in the way every day? If your answer or most days, if the answer is yes, that I let, I, I allow um, my own struggles or challenges or situations, circumstances to paralyze me from actually taking action, then you've got to stop it. And there's no one else that can stop that but you. Um, and it's just understanding that it could always be worse, you guys. You might be in a pit right now. You might be in a rut. You might be in the trenches, but man, it could always be worse. And those are the moments where you build strength, right? And so allowing yourself to be in those lower moments, build some strength, right? Get some thick skin, some tough skin, and bounce back and take action. That is what's going to help you move forward. Allowing yourself day after day after day to just give excuses for why you're not moving your business forward or why this is happening or who's, who's stopping you from doing this, that's just going to keep you stagnant and stale forever. Um, and so that one is just so important. I wanted to come back to this quote, though, guys. Oh, one last thing, too, guys. Uh, back with this, sorry. With the no excuse mentality. When you stop, guys, and I'm not saying, like, when your life is, is hard, you still got to show up and do your business and, like, don't give yourself any space to, like, have that, right? No, absolutely not. Um, but you can't stop because stopping kills your momentum. And every time you stop, you are a brand new coach all over again. Um, there's always something you can do every day to add value to others. So if you're having a hard day or – life sucks or something happened or whatever, don't go absent on social media. Rather than going absent, talk through your struggle or put up a motivational quote or show how you did your workout anyway, right? Showing up and being present is huge and it shows your followers that you're serious. And again, it looks more like a business to people than just somebody who's having fun on social media and this and that, right? And to wrap it up, I just want to come back to the quote because I really want this to sink in, guys, that a vision without action is merely a dream. And we all have them. I've got plenty of dreams right now that I'm like, man, if that could ever happen, that would be like, that would be pretty stinking cool. But right now they're just dreams. Because maybe I haven't taken action behind them, right? And so those visions without actions are just a dream. Action, on the other hand, without vision, 
you're just wasting time, guys. You're just going through the motions. You're on a hamster wheel and it's exhausting. I've been there in my life. I'm there sometimes still now where you're just exhausted because you're just running and passing the time and you don't actually have like any heart behind the action you're taking. It doesn't even matter. Right? So digging deep and finding why you want to do this so bad. So combining the two vision with action, guys, it can change the world. It can change your world. It can change your life. Um, I'm going to stop share. Hey, hey, hey. Any questions for me? I'm going to unmute you guys. Unmute. If you need to remute because, like, it's game night, Mary, then you can on your own. Oh, I just dies. Um, any questions for me? I finished with, like, two minutes. Um, I guess a question um, for me is that obviously there are six awesome steps. Is there anything that you suggest is better to start with or that one can't happen before you do the other, that sort of thing? Mm. Um, I would say the most important for me and for your business is your vital behaviors because everything else would trickle down from that. Sorry, I'm looking at the six right now. The vital behaviors are so important because you can't treat your business like a business if you're not doing those. You can't schedule time to grow if you're not doing those. You can't run challenge groups if you're not doing those. You can't get a success partner if you're not doing your vital behaviors. Or you can, but your success partner should probably hate you because you're wasting their time. <laughs> and, uh, and if you're doing your four vital behaviors, you're not going to have an excuse mentality, right? So I think that one is the hub. That one went first and foremost. Um, but I think even more than that, remembering that, yeah, we can have all the knowledge in the world. We can have like the desire, but if we don't actually do something, guys, then what, right? So remembering that head, heart, and hands analogy too. Anything else? It looks like it's less than a minute, so. All right, my friends, you know what time it is. It's picture time. Everybody, you know, fix your hair, lick your lips, things like that. All right. Yay, we have a dog in the cameo. This is awesome. All right, smile, one, two, three. You guys rock. Thank you so much for spending your Monday with me. Love you all. Mwah.